I feel like I get corona off a party. Um, I got corona the correct way. Motherfuckers just get corona from opening the door. I can get it from opening the party. Come on, man. I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to have fun. We back. Another episode of explicit content. I'm here with. I don't even know what to say. A, a Renaissance man. You feel me? <laughs> Mari Ferguson, Ferg, Million Dollar Maddie. What you want to be called? So like you said, it's this, 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 this is a different uh, spotlight for you. How you feeling? I'm actually pretty nervous. I ain't gonna cap because no. usually I'm in the position that you in, but I'm actually about to change my music name. So damn. To what? Amari Noel. So and you I'm changing ready. it for like a more personal reason or? Uh, it's a better aesthetic. Like Million Dollar Matty, that's cool for what it was when I was in college. But I feel like I'm older now. It's time to be more personal. And I feel like that's just the name, like Amari Noel, that is stand out. And it's my real name. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's your real middle name? Yep. Okay. All right. So, I mean, we, you know, we hop right into it other than music, though. Um, you know, Amari, Amari Noel, Amari Ferguson is from Gary, Indiana. Yes, um, you went to Alcorn, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Banneker. We went to Banneker for a long time together. That's how our relationship started. Okay. Um, yeah, that's kind of just how I want to start off. So, you know, being a kid from Gary, um, you know, what, what's your vision? What, where, where did you get it from? You know, where are you planning on going with it? Uh, so being a kid from Gary, it's actually crazy because growing up and being older, I realized that everybody didn't see the Gary that I saw. So growing up, uh, my mama, she was involved in the West Side Theater Guild, and I was like a theater kid, to be honest. So I seen like a lot of stars, like come in, yeah. let's talk about Michael Jackson, let's talk about Bill Cosby, Coretta Scott King, Shaka Khan. And then just being involved in sales, foreign language programs, or just other things, math and science camps. So I feel like I saw a beautiful Gary, and that's what I want to get back to. So I feel like just always being constantly around the arts and having that as a youth and then fast forward to today, like they don't have none of that. Like literally they can revoke to violence because like they really don't have nothing. Yeah, no, like it's sure. no programs, it's no nothing. So I feel like my vision came from just being around like minded people and growing up in the arts. So it's just like I wanna just do that for the rest of my life type. For sure. So I'm a uh, heavy advocate for arts myself. So why do you think art is so important you feel me, in, in communities, in, in particular black communities? Because that's how we express ourselves. Like from a young age, like, okay, your mama, she say you're in front of a crowd of people, get up and dance. Like yeah. just, you just always hearing music. And I feel like that's how you culture. Like, like I said, I was in musical theater, then I was doing other things. So it's just like arts is very important because like, that's, I feel like that's how you truly express yourself. No, nah, it's who you are. It's an expression. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, what would you say would be like a, a plan for Gary from your eyes? You feel mm. me? Like the, so that's the thing. Right now, you feel me? Like it's it's the whole you know listen to the kids, bro type type of way. You feel me? Mm. Revolution. Um, you know, so I think that the youth is gonna have a significant part in the the change in Gary. You know, and where do you see the start coming in? Uh, with people like us, like somebody like powerful, like it could be you. Somebody powerful that got a hold over like the youth that can really speak to them that know every area like us We went to college, but we also been around people who might not have been blessed to have the opportunities that we was took the street route We've been around football players basketball players So I feel like it got to be somebody in the age millennial age or generation Z like 1997 1998 I feel like those are the type of people that are really gonna like strengthen it because I mean no offense to like the old people, but like when it comes to like the youth, I feel like we the middlemen. Like they yeah, don't really sure. necessarily like listen or really not necessarily listen. They can't understand. Like, Man, it's a new new yeah, world. I hate we, to say that, but it's really a new world order type is, shit. Because you don't necessarily have to be more professional. Like you don't have to be professional yeah, anymore. Right. You can just really pull up to something and yeah, be like, same. "Hey, how you doing? It's this some, is what I do." Me tattoos, boss, whatever. Yeah. So I feel like it's gonna have to be one of us, like real life they got influential power and then people like yourself that's been around like um let's say the city council or just like the mayor so you also know like the other side that can get people in and gravitate all right so you know with all that in mind what would be your message to the youth and gear you know to just because like you said we grew up in a different day like banneker you feel me what's up the idea mark spencer None of that still no more, you feel me? And even then, you know, back then, Gary was in a bad state, but, you know, we had a, a little bit more, you feel me? It didn't so, look like it. Yeah, yeah, and now, you feel me, it, it, you can tell that it's not there, and you feel me, it's obviously evident. 
So, you know, what would you say, like, a little words of inspiration, you feel me, to the youth and girl, you know, like, anybody watching, you know, just give them uh, some inspiration or... I would say keep going. Like, don't be afraid to pursue and do something that you want to do and get around, like, like-minded people. For me, like, I was always, like, a shy person, but I made sure that I was around people that were either doing what I was doing or doing what I wanted to do. And I made sure that I stayed around them because if you don't get around people who actually doing something or got something going for themselves, like, you're not going to, I feel like you're not going to get to that level to where you want to go. Like, if you stand around people that's just on a bad track because not necessarily they want to, but because being product of their environment, you know, but if you, like, type, dang, I fucked up, I'm with the bed. <laughs> but, um, I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, but just getting good. around just like-minded people and i would just say keep pushing like don't never let nobody tell you that you can't do something like do it why not especially in this generation like social media like these phones yeah it's everything right here you can do anything with these phones all right so uh you feel me all of that in mind like-minded individuals how would you say like your transition from uh high school you know and gary like transition because you, you you play basketball too that's the mm-hmm. way you mentioned that so you feel me, as a hooper and creative, how did you transition and then, you know what I'm saying, to college and then in college? Well, we'll just get there first. How was your transition like? <laughs> well, people, if you don't know, I got kicked off the team in college. All like, right, so I never knew that. I got it's explicit kicked- content. It's the real facts right here. <laughs> I got kicked off the team, and I feel like that's when my transition really started because all I knew was sports. Like, you know me. Yeah, like, nah, facts. I didn't really have a life outside of sports. All I was doing was playing basketball. Winter, fall, summer, spring, playing basketball. So I can say my transition, it really just started like when I got kicked off the team. And I have always been afraid to show my real creativity. Like, yeah, your mama going to put you in stuff like Little People's Theater or yeah. sales program. But I feel like once I got kicked off the basketball team, like my transition, it was rocky. But that's when I started to find myself. Like when I stepped outside of something that wasn't the norm and had to put myself out there because I went to school in Mississippi. Didn't nobody know me? Yeah, like, sure. nobody knew nothing about me. So I had to just put myself out there. And I could say my transition, at first it started all bad, so I came back to IUN. Actually, I hated Alcorn. I ain't even go cap, but I love Alcorn now. But I hated Alcorn, so I came back to IUN, but I realized, like, it was something down there that, like, I could grow from. Like, I could actually make my mark on something else. So I could say my transition, it started off rocky. But in the end, like, that's the best thing that I could have ever did was go away to school. No, for sure. And, I, you know, I, I think the same. Like, when I came to West Side, you feel me? like you said, it just, you know, it make you uncomfortable and you grow from that. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, you know, going off to school, you had to, what was your show? Um, I don't want to put your name. It's called Midwest. The Midwest Finesse. So yeah, I did the Midwest it. Finesse, yeah. yeah. Finesse, so when did you start that and how did you start that at school? Um, so I was a mass communications major and you have to take a broadcast announcing class. And actually, I wanted to do the radio show by myself, but I was always friends with this girl named Brene. She go by DJ Illy. And she was just like, we're going to be partners. And it was just beautiful because like we were trying to take home and bring it to like Mississippi. So... We end up doing shows. Where and was every- she from? Well, She's from Chicago. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I met her through, you know how you get in those group yeah, chats when you first start or whatever. I met her through that, and we had just always had, like, beautiful chemistry. Like, I don't know. For some reason, we just worked together. So we did the radio show, and we end up getting, we want, uh, at the award show, we got the best radio show, like, at the school. So it was pretty dope. That's a dope experience. I wish I could still do that right now, like, on the radio show. I mean, you, you you probably yeah. get back to it, and I know um, you know we had worked on a what. So what happened to that project? Uh, I don't you feel. I mean, to put you on the spot, but I know you, you uh-huh. did a project with me. Yeah. Um, so you was highlighting. What was it called? Midwest Legends. Yeah, Midwest Legends. But that's the thing I asked about this because I know you just kind of re rocked it mm-hmm. on episode two now, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, I didn't know myself to be honest. I was just trying stuff, and although it was dope, like it didn't feel authentic to me. Or whatever, like you was cool, and I wanted to get that because everybody want to be around DJ C Rob. Yeah. Like everybody, everybody loves this man. I don't no. know why, I don't know how, but everybody just lo- like you can't hate him. So I really didn't know myself. Like I was trying to find myself, and I wasn't confident in my work or whatever. Because I, for some reason, I felt like it wasn't good enough. But when I go back and look at, it, I was just like, bro, all you really had to do was just do it. And I think I was getting caught up in. 
not having my own moment, if you get what I'm saying, like trying to live in everybody else's moment, but not living in my own moment. So it was just really like a personal problem in my head. Over right, and then, yeah. But like I said, so you re-rocked it and then mm-hmm. now you, what's it called now? Uh, it's called Starving Artist. Starving Artist. Okay. So where you plan to go with that? Uh, I, I want to travel with it. Like just really go to like different states and highlight people who don't really have like exposure, but they talented. So the first yeah, dude so- I did was Don Louie. He was from Philadelphia and when he first came to Alcorn, like he instantly, I mean, he, yeah, he instantly like just stood out. Like he mm-hmm. left his mark. It was just like, you gonna know who I am. And that's something that I want to be because I wasn't always confident within myself. And I just gravitated towards just helping people. Like that's what I want to do. And what I do best is being behind the camera, editing, asking questions, interviewing people. So I really just want to travel state to state. I can accredit like Complex and Fader. I grew up like just idolizing that type of yeah. stuff. I can accredit them to helping me get to where I want to get today and just having my own because ownership is becoming like a big thing. Just started something that I can leave a legacy and give people in my city jobs. Like, because I know it's a whole bunch of people that would want to be doing what I'm doing. They might not know how to do it, but they interested. So I feel like if you interested, you know, like you would get better. So just being able to give people jobs and being able to not have like a regular nine to five, like being no, able sure. to be a creative and actually go talk with line my like minded people and network and connect. Like you said, all that you know come with ownership and you feel me, owning your time is key. You feel, that's a bunch of you know, Nipsey Hustle mm-hmm. type shit. He taught us about hey, all that. Hey, for real. You feel me? Rest in peace to Nah, so I mean when you saying that, um and you know, ownership and building your brand, so I know you said you changed your name to Mari Noel. What's next for your music career? Oh, dang. So, actually, I got a manager now. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. You were telling me that on the side. Yeah, he, go by, he goes by Kevin. And I really just manifested that. And he came after I dropped my EP, Superstar and On, because everybody had been begging me. They was just like, just drop an EP, just drop yeah. an EP. But, I mean, everybody liked my music, but I wasn't confident within myself. So, it was really about confidence and... Fast forward to February, I got connected through basketball. One of my friends, Kat, she was, she just hit up him because I think they went to VCU together okay. or something like that. She hit him up and she was like, you looking for any artists? And he was just like, like an alternative R&B. And that's been my dream for forever because I can sing, but I always was scared. I don't know why, I just scared. And, and rapping was easy because I'm good with words. Like, I love, shout out to Miss Caldwell, Spellboat team. But I, um. Damn, that Spellboat shit. I always wanted a Spellboat shirt. Yeah, I, I love know. words. So, anyway, um, he hit me up and he was just like, yo, like, I got this vision for you. You'd be perfect. And he was like, because I knew I had to change my name. Like, how I mentioned earlier. Like, I want to be. I want to be getting endorsement deals. I want to just have a name that's distinctive. Like, everybody use Dollar. Yeah. Everybody use Million. But I got Maddie from my apartment, uh, Madison Townhomes, and I just wanted to be a millionaire, so I played it on that yeah. or whatever okay. like that. But met this dude, and he was just like, what you think about changing your name to, like, Amari Noel? Because I was thinking, like, I got to change my name, but I so don't he, know he, what he to. Gave you the, okay. Yeah, so he was just like, Amari Noel. So... I'm about to, the coronavirus really messed up everything. Like, I think people would have been showed it, but it was a blessing in disguise because, like, I got to actually, like, I'm a researcher. I do my homework, so I got to actually study R&B. I got to listen to, like, old classes. I would listen to Alicia Keys all day, Jill Scott all day, just listening to people, the Commodores, like, listening to them, really trying to, like, put my all into, like, R&B because that's always what I want to do. Like, just sing. Like, r and your mama singing, too. Yeah. Like, a lot of people sing. don't know that. Your yeah, mama always been singing. Mom. She, a, uh, she actually a gospel singer. She got stuff on iTunes, everything. Look up. Out to East Ferguson. But, and kind of shying away from that because my mama did it. You know? No, I don't I, know if you feel like no, that. Like, trust me. You, you don't want to do go something there because, like, your mama doing it. But you know you really good at it. Like, you have, like, these visions and thoughts. And, man, I... Just to credit him because really he just took me out of my shed. And then I had sent him a song. He was like, you should sing more. And I was just like, okay, I can yeah, I can do this. So I'm about to drop an EP song. We're about to get visuals and everything. And just see what life just like take me. For the singing. Okay. So as far as like a recording artist, what's your uh, process? Like you, you write or you a freestyler? You feel me? You say you always do with words. How long it take you to write a song? Uh, It really depends on like the mood. Like... A catchy song, like, faster beats, it's easy for me to write to that because, like, 
I can freestyle real good. So it's just like boom, boom, boom. But um, I really like to take my time and write and put thought process behind everything because I'm not just one of those people that just going to say anything because, mm. like, it's popping. So I actually, because, I mean, I got nephews. I got people that just look oh, up look to up me. To so I'm not, just gonna, go. I'm not just going to say anything, although I could. So it don't really take me long. I could say, like, 30 minutes, and then people don't know. I record off my phone, GarageBand, with headphones, iPhone headphones, so it's accessible. As soon as no, I write it, it, I hear a beat, boom, 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 boom. This nigga on a movie set, uh, or he works on a movie set, he told me one time, like, that they mic broke, and mm-hmm. he just used a microphone here, or a Microsoft headset, like, off the Xbox. Yeah. He, like, just attached it in there, and that shit worked. Bro, bro, it do. I'm for real. So, People yeah. you always get creative. ask me that. Like, how, what do you record it? And I just literally just tell them on my phone. So I could say it take me 30 minutes to probably like write. And then I could say I freestyle my second verses. Like I might write the first verse, write the hook. But the second verse, I try to make it just flow off of whatever I feel from the beat. But I got to feel the beat. If I'm for the beat, that shit not going to work. The beat is the heart. That's real shit. Yeah. But like you uh, you say, you got a lot of people that look up to you and stuff, mm-hmm. like nephews and stuff. What's your little or your relationship like with your little brother? You feel me? I know he been taking off lately. Yeah, that's um, my best friend. Yeah, like, so how you always like supported him type shit growing up oh, and yeah. pushed him. So backstory is um all my family is so talented and we was doing improv in the room one day and I think we were talking about like I don't know, regular Gary problems, your daddy ain't there, your mama ain't yeah. there, so everybody would just take a turn and he one day he was just like, Can I do it? And man, like he just said what he said, and I forgot he was my brother for a minute. And this was just like when he was just young. And I went downstairs to my mama and I started crying. I was just like, oh my God, like he gonna be a star. And I was just crying. And I felt like, I always felt bad growing up because like the first child, like they kind of like the meal ticket or just like the parent dummy. So I was real good at basketball. So like a lot of times, like, he got to participate in certain stuff, but, like, everything was on me. And he never, not once, was just, like, I hate my life or not that I seen. He was always supportive and everything like that. So, when to see him finally getting, like, his moment, like, and being in the background, me not doing anything, I think it's just amazing because I always seen it. Like, I always knew that he would just... Foreshadowing type shit. Yeah, I always just knew that he would just do something. And it's just freaking amazing. I, it makes me want to cry, to be honest. All right, for sure. Uh, so, what do you think, you feel me? How important is it being a role model, not just to, you feel me, in your household, but mm-hmm. you feel me, to the people in your, you feel me, your school? Yeah, so Sarah H. Givens taught us that. Like, we was literally, like, everybody was role models there because yeah, what did yeah. she expect? Excellence. Like, she always said that. So, I feel like it's important to be a role model to everybody, but also be yourself. I think that's what I'm learning, like, more, like... Because I didn't always used to be confident in my sexuality, like, and I feel like that hindered me a lot. So once I just got free and, like, just really, truly just been myself, I feel like it's a lot of people out there like me. So it's important that I lead by example, like, and whatever I do. And, yeah, I'm going to make mistakes. Like, yeah, I'm going to fumble the bag. Like, I done been through, yeah, I done been through everything. But at its core, like, being genuine and being a role model for people that's under you is very important because I can say that. I always felt like low like growing up but it was always just some people that helped me so i feel like i i just got a calling to help people and be nah, an damn, that's, that's real shit because i feel the same about myself like <clears throat> you feel me it's just like something in me i can't forget about certain people you feel me like when i i know your talent i recognize that shit and i want to you feel me like bring that yeah. out in you and, just, and that, that's troubling too sometimes because you you want to bring out the talent in people and they don't want to bring it out in themselves mm-hmm. and it's like you beating a dead horse and then you forget about yourself like you be you, so you're working hard on them like, oh yeah i get honest so who are some of the people like you feel me i would i'm not gonna say or just who are some people you look up to because i'm saying i'm thinking like artists and stuff because you're you know a rapper artist but then also you're a creative too yeah. so, you so all that varies I could say Drake for sure because that's the first person I remember hearing music that made me be like, okay, I could do both because growing up, like, I don't know. I didn't really see like I a, a lot of... Huh? Master P told me that. What? That you could do both. Like, yeah, growing yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, you growing could do up, both. But so, no, nah, go ahead. I didn't really see a lot of people or like a lot of females that was just like doing what Drake did besides Lauren Hill. Like, shout out to Lauren Hill. So I could say Drake. And then Young and May, like, I ain't even gonna cap as far as, like, being who I am and my identity. Like, she's fearless. Like, she's bold. 
and she she put on her team. I think I love that the most. Like she puts on her team. Like if you watch her videos, you watch anything, it's team, it's team, it's team, and just being confident. So Drake, young and man. I can also say my mother. My mother was a role model because like yeah, sure. she in her forties, like and still like chasing the dream. Like I never not seen my mama like chase her dream. Yes, yeah, she was a parent and she put a lot on the back burn because like me being so heavily involved in with my brother, but like just my mama, cause she just put me around like so much stuff. Like it was just like, you're not gonna sit down. Like you're not gonna like, yeah, you might be uncomfortable doing this, but you better finish. Cause you told but, me that you wanted to do this. Oh, and that was that whole little Banneker parent way, like yep, the PTA, PTA way we had, yep. you feel me? Like your mom was one, my mom, uh, I remember I every year, Miss Stalin, Daryl, mom, yeah. Uh, Aunt Julie, uh, yeah, Julie, that's what I'm mm-hmm. talking about. Uh, Tavi, I'm like, yeah, everybody knows just like, you feel me? And that's why I, I think, you feel me, some of us so close and we finna really change, make change, mm-hmm. you because we had that instilled us at a young yeah. age and that's something that you can't break. And you that's feel me? crazy because I was debating with my friend and I had to realize that everybody did not have that. Like, it yeah, was such and a I, privilege that's, that's to shit go I'm realizing now. Like, and that's the thing, bro. Like, you know, the old banneker not there no more, and yeah. Miss Gibbs is not there no more. You feel me? I just feel like that was a part of Gary that you feel me? Like, it's like a time portal type shit. Like, it was open and then it closed. Like, if you ain't, if you ain't spent, it was for a reason. You feel me? Because everybody mean, who was there was there for a reason. Like, I'm and, mad, though. And you see that shit now. Because I always want to be one of the people like that go back and talk to the kids or just go and talk to teachers, like, or go nah, talk to sure. the principals and just because they was like our mamas. Like, you was around. Them they used to beat us like around. it too. They used to beat the fuck out. <laughs> hey, shout out to Mrs. Zimmerman. I think his paddles hurt the worst. Nah, like, for, his I never worst. forget, bro. This is like some early age scam shit. Like we had the the ticket. You know, remember Mr. Zimmerman tickets, right? Yeah. My auntie was a teacher, and one day I was at the teacher store with. I found out where they sold the tickets. I'm like, I put them in her car. I'm like, buy these for me, auntie. She like, okay. She ain't think nothing. I took them to school. Man, we. It was like me, Jarius, uh, Keith. We sold all them tickets. Mr. Zimmer was like, how y'all get... Because he used to stamp them, remember? <laughs> and it yeah. may had no stamps, so he knew they was fake. And he was just trying to figure that shit out. I ain't never get caught, but yeah, niggas went down for that yeah, ticket. Yeah, Hatchet. He too. hit him with that paddle. Yeah, Miss Hatchet, Miss Broom, all them... She was teaching us words. Like, Ludacris, we was learning that Bro. in second grade. So that's the thing. Miss Hatchet was a music teacher, but she used to teach us words and shit in art. Like, real art, you feel me? Like, not just music. That's the thing. You feel me? That's real. Right? You, you feel me, Miss Hatchet? And that's the thing, like... They used to tell you, like, you don't get it now. But now, 20 years later, that shit makes so I'm much so sense, thankful. bro. Because like, you wasn't, nobody, you can't tell me that people was getting that type of experience. You mm, feel me? I was always mad, though, because I was bad. So she never let me sing in the music festival. So I used to be mad. But yeah, I think that was one of my, now that I look back, that was one of my favorite teachers because you might not have seen, like you said, what she was doing right now. But today, like, that's the most important thing to me, words, like, and just music, so. But you got to think about Miss Hatcher's origin, and you feel me, like, her history and girl, like, she was married to Richard Hatcher, like, Ooh, you feel me, that shit yeah. wild as hell, like. Yeah, that's, that's I used crazy. To, I used to think that was, like, some lame shit back then, like, the mayor, his wife is my teacher. Me too, <laughs> but, me too. But that like, shit is like, really. nobody cared that your husband yeah, was the mayor. She used either. to say that shit all the time, but it's really, history, she was, bro. she was flexing, because that was her husband, like, that history. shit. Yeah, like, nah. So what's, like, some uh, inspiring quotes you look up to? Quotes? Yeah. Or you feel me, you got any words of your own that you... Uh, so I actually, like, had, like, little words of affirmation, like, on yeah. the wall. What's so, some of those? Uh, my favorite one is be yourself because everyone else is already taken. Because I can say for, like I was saying, majority of my life, I used to, like, compare, like, or compare or try to put myself in other people's shoes that, like, it was hurting me. Like, my mental, like, it was fucking me nah, up. Sure. So be yourself, everyone else is already taken. Um, I'm a millionaire. I know that's just simple, but I want to be a millionaire. So that, but be yourself, everyone. Be yourself because everyone else is already taken. I think that's my favorite. Like, All right, for sure. Any other thing, family, comments you have to wrap up or uh, something you want to say to the youth? Something to the youth. <laughs> be yourself because everybody else is already taken. And, bro. Family is important. I think that's what I'm just remembering now. And family don't always just got to be your family that you... By blood. By blood. Saying. Like, just like this relationship. Or just, like, utilize your relationship. And home is important. Don't don't necessarily... Like, I'm not telling you that you can go to other... Pla- that you can't go to other places and start your life there. Because for some people, that's just for them. Like, they want to go start their life everywhere else. But... 
really realize what you got at home. Like really realize what you can do and how you can make your mark in the world with what's around you. So I think stay true to yourself. Do what you want to do. Fuck. Not fuck your parents, but fuck adults' opinions. Like if this is what you want to do with your it's... life. Yeah. If this is what you want to do with your life, like, bro, do it. Why not? That's real shit. All right, man. You got it. Mari Noel, old million dollar Maddie. Drop your social to have them follow you, you feel me? Uh, so you can follow me at million dollar Maddie. That's on Instagram, million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-D-O-L-L-A-M-A-D-D-Y. Then on Twitter, that's where I'm unfiltered at. So I think y'all probably like that one. St. Maddie Sway, S-T-M-A-D-D-Y-S-W-A-Y underscore. And... Oh, follow me on YouTube, too, because that's where I do, uh, where I'm about to keep pushing more content so you can see, like, creatives or whatever, Million Dollar Maddie. But, yeah, that's me. All right, appreciate you. I appreciate you, too. Look at this man. He's on the back of his shirt. Oh, 1K. Make sure y'all shut.